Hey everyone, I'm Dan from jazzcomposerspresent.com, an online space where composers, musicians, and listeners come together to celebrate the music we love. I'm here today with Florian Hufner, Juno-nominated pianist and band leader, composer, arranger, and assistant professor of jazz studies at Memorial University. Florian is here to talk to us today about chord cycles. Thanks for the introduction, Dan, and welcome everyone. I'm excited to uh, talk to you about this. Yeah, so my topic is chord cycles or cyclic chord progressions. And it's just another nice tool to have in your harmonic palette to achieve a different effect, right? We can use functional harmonic progressions, modal progressions, atonal progressions. Um, and cyclic progressions have a very special effect. Um, what they are is you use a chord or a group of chords and you repeat that in a predetermined uh, intervallic distance, right? So it could be moving through minor thirds, major thirds, major seconds, perfect fourth. So any any interval works as long as you keep consisting with always transposing by that interval. The musical effect uh, could be described similar to what the paintings by uh, MC Escher do on a visual level. Um, if you look at this painting, and you're probably very familiar with his work, you can see that the water seems to be flowing away from us, but it yet connects back to the beginning through this optical trick, optical illusion. And that's kind of what cyclic chord progressions do on an oral level. They they keep evolving away from the starting chord, never establishing a sense of a tonal center because we keep moving away in these, I'll call them random intervals that we can't really make sense of in a functional harmonic context. And so it's, it's a beautiful way to create these really circular chord progressions, they, they sound that they keep getting brighter or keep getting darker depending on the chord and interval type you're, you're choosing for that. Um, a famous example for this is the piece Cyclic Episode by Sam Rivers that really coined the term and, and this, this technique. As you can see here in the first four bars, we have minor seventh chords that are uh, cycling through an ascending minor third pattern. Um, Expanding on that, what I started doing is using a set of two to four chords and cycling that whole set through a predetermined interval to have a, a longer and more complex uh, variation on this. So let's look at a um, first example. So this is the solo form, one of the solo forms of my piece in circles uh, recorded with my quartet. Um, I've circled the the temporary tonal centers here. So you can see this piece cycles through minor thirds descending. And then I have interpolated each of those cycle chords with a second chord. You can see that it's all the same chord quality, all major seven chords with a third in the bass. And you can see a consistent bass pattern up half step, down a major third, up half step, down a major third. And what this creates is, is this illusion of constantly evolving, constantly modulating, and overall having this really circular cyclical effect to the solo form. So let's have a listen to this one. Yeah, so I hope you can hear that, that it, it just keeps moving forward and it, it really feels round. You never feel the the um, you never feel an arrival at, at a tonic or anything like that. Um, what works really well for me coming up with these progressions, if I'm trying to find a smooth connection between the different cycle chords. So in this case, and we could get deeper into the harmonies behind this if we had more time, but just briefly, if you look from A major over C sharp to F major, the relationship between these two scales could be described as a one major, A major, going to a subdominant minor chord, right? F, F major is a parallel of D minor seven, which would be the subdominant minor. So I, I'm trying to think in functional harmonic terms to connect my cycles logically. Um, another example of this two chord 
said that cycling is uh, the last eight bars of Inner Urge by Joe Henderson. He does a similar thing. His cycle is um, down a uh, major second. Yeah, we'll move on to one more example. And here I've been using four bar sets of chords that are cycling through uh, descending major thirds in this case. Again, I've, ci I've circled the, the cycle chords. And one more addition I did here is that I used slight variations each time the four bar uh, chord set appears. So the first time you can see we go from A major up to B flat minor, so upper half step. The second time we go from F major to G major, upper whole step, different chord quality. And the third time we go upper half step again from D flat major to D minor seven, but then I interpolated uh, sub five going back. So again, expanding on the concept, introducing some variations. The overall effect remains the same that we have this illusion of going forward, going forward, keep modulating, keep evolving from where we're coming from. So let's have a listen to this one. This is a piece called Last More Time. Right. I hope you can hear that it, it seems to keep ascending, seems to keeping brighter and, and, and more intense. And that's really what these core progressions do. So I'd like to encourage you to experiment with those. I often stumble upon them uh, kind of by, by chance if I'm hearing a certain chord progression. And then I notice, oh, I, I just arrived at the same chord I started, but a minor third away. What happens if I just now keep continuing this pattern? And that's how I how I found a lot of these chord progressions. I didn't initially want to write a cyclic chord progression, but once I saw that this was happening, I took the opportunity to, to complete it. And then I, I really liked the result and I included those chord progressions into these respective pieces. So I hope that gives you some ideas and some, again, some encouragement and some, yeah, just uh, some uh, new ways of thinking about harmonies. Thanks for watching today's mini lesson. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Drop any questions, comments, or suggestions for future videos in the comment section down below. To watch our full length events and participate in live Q and A's with our presenting artists, head over to jazzcomposerspresent.com. Thanks and we'll see you next time.